We've now been testing and comparing Apple's M3 family of MacBook Pros for one month, making many discoveries along the way, and I think I've finally figured out whether it's worth spending the extra cash for the $2,000 M3 Pro MacBook Pro over the $1,600 base M3 model. Because initially, we thought this was a killer value, but after some of the tests I'm about to show you in this video, our conclusion has completely changed. But before I get into the performance numbers and our multitasking stress test results, I wanna show you guys all of the major differences. The bonus perk with the more expensive M3 Pro model is that you get to choose the space black color which I personally love but other than that the designs are basically identical on the outside including having the same 14 inch display with the same feature set like 120 Hz ProMotion, mini LED tech and 600 nits of standard brightness that goes up to 1600 for HDR content. The $1600 model is of course limited to the M3 chip, which actually gives it a higher rated battery life of 15 hours of web browsing compared to 12, and the only other noticeable difference is the fact that it has one less Thunderbolt port than the M3 Pro model, which has the additional port on the right side, which is very convenient to have. The cameras are the same, the speakers are the same, the microphones, the Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth specs. So the only thing left to discuss is what's on the inside, the chip, and the performance differences. First of all, the M3 only has a single fan compared to dual fans on the M3 Pro, and that actually does have an impact on fan noise with the more expensive M3 Pro model running quieter throughout a lot of the performance tests that we ran. Also, the M3 model seemingly only has two NAND storage chips on the inside, which led to a significant difference in SSD transfer speeds, even though they both come with the same 512 gigs of storage. So right off the bat, there are already a bunch of advantages that you get by choosing the $2,000 model. And with that said, let's jump into the performance numbers. The most important difference is the fact that the base M3 model only comes with eight gigabytes of RAM, which as you'll see in a moment, leads to disappointing performance compared to 18 gigabytes on the M3 Pro model, which also comes with an additional three CPU cores and four extra GPU cores. So let's jump right into CPU performance starting with Geekbench 6, and in the single core test, they both have the same performance as expected, but in multi-core, the M3 Pro is 15% faster, which is actually a bit underwhelming since you're paying 25% more cash. We then tested web design performance in Figma using a project from 500 Designs, one of the best design studios based out of California, and the M3 Pro model finished about 15 seconds faster, which honestly isn't a big deal at all. So just looking at these two simple benchmarks, it doesn't really seem worth it, but watch what happens when we get into the real world CPU rendering test in the new Cinebench 2024 10 minute stress test. Now with either of them, and especially the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the best way to boost your multitasking workflow is with the Geminos dual stacked monitor from our sponsor Mobile Pixels, which is a game changer for multitasking workflow, allowing me to drag and drop files and clips from the top display right into my video editing app on the bottom, all while taking screenshots from my video on my MacBook, saving me time and money, and it's all stacked onto this compact base, which saves desk space and comes with a bunch of extra ports. So check out the Geminos dual stack monitor using the link below. The M3 Pro scored 35% higher in Cinemench 2024, likely because the base M3 was throttling with that single fan not able to sustain the performance. So I went ahead and got into another real world CPU test, which is music production in Logic Pro. And here the M3 Pro model was able to run 22% more tracks without overloading, which is quite impressive. Then I got into Xcode programming, which has been rebuilt from the ground up for Xcode 15, and here the regular M3 model took 27.5% longer to finish the test, so it's already looking quite worth it to invest the extra 400 bucks into the M3 Pro. But wait, it gets even better when we start looking at GPU performance. So starting off with Geekbench 6's 
metal test, we're looking at a huge gain of 44.5% graphics performance with the M3 Pro, which is a huge deal for 25% more cash. But it got even better when we tested gaming performance using 3D Mark's Wildlife Extreme Benchmark, where the M3 Pro now gave us a massive 50% more FPS, which basically proves that anyone that wants to do a bit of gaming should absolutely buy the MP Pro. But then I got into testing the new Cinebench 2024 GPU rendering test, and here, the base M3 MacBook Pro couldn't even run the test because the app itself thinks that eight gigs of RAM isn't enough, which is a bit sad, so I had to test the 16 gigabyte RAM M3 model, and here, the M3 Pro was an astounding 64% faster than the M3 chip, which is just crazy. Now, one of the coolest new additions this year is ray tracing, so I tested Blender 3D rendering, which now fully supports it, and in the Party Tug Cycles render, the M3 Pro chip model was literally over twice as fast, which was mind blowing. So anybody doing 3D rendering work absolutely must buy the M3 Pro if you wanna save time. So then I started testing photo editing performance in Lightroom Classic, exporting 50, 42 megapixel raw photos, and the M3 Pro was once again over twice as fast, showing such a big advantage now that we're getting into real world tasks that people actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. But the most surprising part of all is that I also tested the 16 gigabyte RAM model of the M3 MacBook Pro, and that one actually finished in one minute and six seconds, significantly faster than the eight gigabyte model, so that small amount of of RAM was killing the performance. But it got even worse when we ran the same test with just five web tabs open to simulate a very light multitasking workload, which honestly, most people have at least five tabs open most of the time, and the eight gig model got even slower to two minutes. So we upped the stakes even more and opened up 10 web tabs with a variety of different pages open, and guess what? it slowed down massively to five minutes and 16 seconds, which is just ridiculous, which shows that eight gigabytes of RAM is not enough for running performance tasks while multitasking. But wait, it gets even worse because we tested video editing in the new 10.7 version of Final Cut Pro, and while our 5K HVC export test finished at the same time because both models are limited by the encoders, we ran our craziest 8K Canon RAW R5 export, and once again, the M3 Pro finished over twice as fast as the eight gigabyte M3 model. And just by upgrading the RAM from eight gigs to 16 on the M3, we saved over five minutes on the export time. And keep in mind that this test didn't even include any web browser tabs open at all, so it would have been even slower while multitasking. So the obvious answer is that anybody who cares about performance should definitely upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM, but then the problem is that we're now at $1,800 total, just 200 bucks shy of the M3 Pro model. Actually, no. The M3 Pro is currently on sale on Amazon, brand new, for $150 off for a total of $1,850, which is a steal of a deal. And while the M3 model is also on sale for $100 off right now, so it's just $1,500, it's unfortunately the eight gigabyte RAM model, and you can't even configure it up to 16 gigs of RAM on Amazon, so you're stuck paying full price from the Apple store. And then you've got to remember the other differences like the extra Thunderbolt port and the dual fans for quieter operation. So if you factor all of the differences, I am now 100% sure that everybody who cares about performance at all should be buying the M3 Pro model for $1,850 on Amazon. And I'll leave a link to that sale down below. So hopefully you enjoyed this one month testing comparison. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and check Check out how the base M3 Pro model compares to the upgraded chip version right over there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.